So what's the value of growing exports overall via U.S. Dairy Export Council versus co-ops and processors establishing their own international partnerships? I will say this. It's not one or the other. We actually work with dairy processors and co-ops. And we want co-ops and processors to have international relationships. It is vitally important that they develop them, nurture them, and maintain them. So our goal is to facilitate that and then to support them in understanding the marketplace, how to navigate it, what the guidelines are, uh, you know, what might be some of those constraints and how to manage those constraints. But as I like to say, we're here as the warm up band. So, you know, the trade, the global marketplace is a concert. We're the warm up band. You guys, you're the main act. You're the rock stars. We're just there to make you look good, get everybody in the mood to want to buy from U.S. dairy and um, work together. So it's really a collaborative effort that we have with dairy processors and co-ops. And we have them participate as part of our activities. We engage them and support them um, when they're in market with our office representatives that we have in uh, the various markets. So we have office representatives in Mexico, South America, Southeast Asia, China, Hong Kong, Taiwan, Korea, Japan, and um, in the Middle East. They're as boots on the ground to help co-ops and processors in market really be successful and engage with the local trade. So I've had the opportunity to go on a farmer trade mission with your team to the Center for Dairy Excellence in Singapore this past year. Um, got to meet the great staff, all the people that are carrying our message forward in that large uh, market that we have in Southeast Asia. And uh, very eye-opening for me to, to see the differences in culture, the differences in taste profiles, and how we can adapt, how we manage our exports in the United States co-op-wise and processor-wise to, uh, to sell to those markets. So, my question is, why do you think it's important that farmers attend these trade missions versus just having our U.S. DEC on staff on site? I will say, I mean, the benefit of having farmers be a part of our trade missions is one, it's a learning opportunity for you. We want you to see, you know, what is going on in the, in the international marketplace. Also to learn about those different cultures, as you mentioned, you know, Charles, but it's also very important to see where your dollars are going and how they're working on behalf of dairy farmers. It's very important for us, for you to know how that's how those, those dollars are working on your behalf. But the other part is it's very important that the trade and those markets see you because our dairy farmers are very important to buyers. You really bring that personal element to it. They understand and and really look to you guys as rock stars as to who's making this this nutritious product called milk and dairy and how it's turned into all the various products that you get from it. Ed, I think you're a part of like probably the second or third mission we've we've taken to the region. And every time, you know, buyers and users are just so excited to meet the dairy farmers that are behind the products that they buy. And they're really eager to learn about your farms, about your cows, about how you take care of them, about the practices and the care that goes into it. It, it means a lot to them because it resonates. Your passion and your love for what you do just oozes out and it reinforces to them that they're buying from a source that really takes a lot of care, a lot of pride, and a lot of time in providing a high quality nutritious product that's going into their in use product that's going to consumers that they are putting their name against. So it, it's just invaluable to have farmers there. And hopefully you found that experience very fulfilling, but also learning. Because it's 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 kind of like show and tell. I can tell you a lot, but to see it really brings a lot to the table. But I think the other part that I learned from it is you come with a different set of eyes and different set of perspectives. And I learned just as much as farmers in market and how to approach things better 
Uh, our teams learn that, hey, these are ask, you know additional things that we want to add to the story that we make sure that we highlight because you bring a set of uh, expertise there also. So we're all part of a team selling this product to these end users and really making sure that we're successful overall. And one of the observations that I went, we had a group of people geographically and size difference and people, uh, United States gets pegged as having large dairies only. And we had people anywhere from grazing 100, 150 cows to, uh, you know, my farm in the Midwest and freestall. And, and I think people in Southeast Asia are surprised at how cold the temperatures get here and we can still get a lot of quality milk out of our cows to California and Texas dairy farms. And so I think that that's a great story a U.S. dairy can tell is our diverse background. Um, we're not one size fits all and we have all different ways to sustainably produce that milk. So looking forward, are there any international partners that we're looking? Um, uh, let me rephrase that. Looking to international partners with exports, how are we looking to find these partners and and help them get into the markets? Well, I'll kick this off because um, and and William, you can chime in. We have all different types of partners as U.S. Tech that we're looking to engage with. So, from a marketing standpoint, there are nutrition and innovation partners that we engage with in market, like Tech de Monterey, the University of Tech de Monterey in Mexico which really helps us connect with not only distributors and educating end users, but also students who are going to be those future food formulators. Uh, we partner with a group out of Japan called Kyoto Sanyo, which helps us develop applications and recipes that are local friendly to include dairy ingredients in those local food applications, so local cuisine, things that we wouldn't even consider from, you know, an American palate. But also, you know, my counterpart that is, leads the cheese marketing program, we have culinary partnerships that work with chefs in various markets and provide education on, to those chefs of how to use cheeses in various different foods and understanding how cheese works and the different, you know, values and benefits of cheeses. And then we have our sustainability team, which we call SAMA, which I, you know, I apologize to Nick Gardner because I never get the acronym right for, you know, sustainability and multilateral affairs. I think I might have gotten it right finally. But they partner with such groups as like AICA out of Latin America, which support the different policy efforts they have and putting forward around sustainability. So we have these partnerships and we're constantly looking at who else within that world can help reinforce and support that U.S. dairy story, but also our initiatives and our endeavors and within those respective markets? Yeah, and the one thing, if I can add, Vicki, here, too, is just I, I think around the world and dairy trade is very relational. And there's a lot of relationships that are critical as part of this. And as much time as I spend looking at the data and Excel files, a lot of this is driven by strong relationships that U.S. DEC has in the region by being committed and be, by remaining you know, steadfast in our commitment to U.S. dairy exports. So whether that's partnerships with uh, different uh, different groups like Vicky was mentioning, whether it's working with government relationships there or whether it's relationships with the trade importers so that they know us, know where to come, know how that we can help solve problems that they have or also create solutions more importantly. Uh, to them, I think is really where we, uh, as US DEC, and really thanks to our strength from Chekhov, is really powerful. All right.